Okay, now it's uh, October 22nd, a few days later. My second batch of monarchs finally started hatching out. And uh, as you recall, I had two hatch out from the first batch that were both males, so that didn't get me very far. I can't open the cage this time because uh, these butterflies are too close to the entrance. But here you can see I put a piece of watermelon on there and the they're nectaring off the watermelon. So for monarchs, if you don't have good flowers for them to nectar on, the watermelon will do quite nicely. And uh, I had two more male hatch out, so I have, or one more male hatch out, so I have three or four males and only one female, and she's up here, right up there. So she's going to get hit on for sure. <laughs> uh, just hatched out this morning. It's noon time now, but. Uh, after they uh, acclimatize themselves and warm up, they'll be mating, coupling right here in the cage. Don't know if I'll be able to catch it on camera. And then one or two days later, that female is going to start laying eggs all over this milkweed. And so then I'll have my, my stock to rear. And my goal is to get at least 30 uh, full uh, monarch butterflies uh, hatch out, you know, ex pupa, perfect specimens. Uh, I would go more, I'll probably have hundreds of eggs, but I just don't have enough milkweed to feed all those caterpillars. And uh, from my experience, they eat a lot. And if they don't have enough food, then they start pupating too early. And they're undersized. So I want to get full-sized monarchs. So I'm not going to uh, try to <laughs> rear more than I can feed that's the key point. Alright, well we'll check back maybe this evening and see if we can see the monarchs coupling, pairing. 